Hello everyone, Nubkex here, welcome back to Nubraids, and today we've got some clan versus clan news. So, we do have, I believe it is the final clan versus clan tournament of 2023, and it does not have personal rewards, so pretty chill one. Uh, I, excuse me, oh my god, ugh, choking. I, <laughs> I will be here streaming tomorrow, I did miss the last family clan stream because I was sick. Uh, hopefully we'll be all good for this one tomorrow. Not sure if I'm going to start bang on as it starts might be a little bit delayed um yeah just because my my partner's last day and actually in the office so yeah might be a little bit delayed just looking after the dog in the morning because of that that's okay though we'll be on pretty early and it's gonna be pretty chill like honestly we might actually do our cursed city playthrough maybe on that stream as well actually live stream some cursed city you know maybe level up some champions gear some stuff up during cbc as well uh just to hang out for the end of the year so hopefully it'll be pretty fun. So I'll see you for that. Uh, also, we have shard events, big shard events happening during this. So who has shards to spare? I don't know. So first of all, on Tuesday, that's the 19th of December, it's tomorrow. We're planning to launch progressive chance event, starting with an X50. They are, they are really slamming these progressive chance events. I think, I don't remember who I who it was. Was it maybe Eherbad was talking about it? That I think, you know, in casinos, uh, progressive chance slot machines or whatever i don't know exactly how they work i've never never used one but i believe that they are the most uh lucrative of the casino machines right basically the more that you play the higher chance you have of winning it just encourages people to like spend a lot it seems to be succeeding very much so in raid as well at least from what plarium are doing they are slamming the progressive chance events we're having them constantly now uh, I mean, I'm certainly glad that the 10x events seem to basically be gone, and it's x15. That's an improvement. Um, though I, I can also see the side of it that, man, they're not really all that exciting, these progressive chance events, because they are constant, and certainly how are you ever supposed to get enough shards to really dive in deep into a progressive chance event if they're this frequent? I guess just save for ages and then pick one that you really, really like. We've got some very strong ones, I will say, though, tomorrow, Tuesday. Um, so from Ancient Sacreds Primals, we have Feral the Barkhorn, Staltus, Totora, and Goffred. For me, the big winner here is definitely Feral the Barkhorn. That's what uh, a lot of people seem to be most excited about. He is the brand new, so no one probably has him, Sylvan Watcher, Spirit Defense Champion. Uh, he comes in very good HP and defense, 100 speeds okay, lots of resist, 50. 60 resist on all battles aura is very nice. His A1 is a single target decrease speed that ignores 20% boss resistance. Lovely. His A2 is an AoE decrease accuracy block buffs for two turns that ignores 20% boss resistance. Then his A3 is a four turn increase resist and perfect fail on your whole team. Well, perfect fail not on him, mind you. But is three turns increase resist, only two turns on the perfect fail. I think, again combo this with a buff extender for hydra and it should be insanely good i've actually not done any showcases of the new champions let me know in the comments down below should i do showcase videos of the new champions i might actually record those might bring them out over christmas break or something so i don't have to record i'm not sure exactly what my plans are quite yet i'm still pla i've been planning christmas dinner i've never actually properly cooked a christmas dinner before it's always been visiting someone but i'm in charge this year i'm the turkey master you can Call me. I might change the channel name to Turkey Master. No, Braids is, is old. Turkey Master is new. But yeah, I think that's really good. He's got a great passive too. Spirit of the North. Allies under two or more buffs, 50 more resist, three or more, 50 more accuracy, and four or more, 20% damage. He seems like a beast for Hydra. Again, I think especially with a buff extender, so you're keeping increased resist up all the time. Very good uptime on Perfect Veil as well. Uh, and then he can come in and he can slam... Uh, decrease accuracy block buffs. He'll probably get feared then because he doesn't have perfect fail. He might miss his A1, but yeah, I think that's still, it's a very, very, very strong kit that this champion has. It's very good indeed. So he'd be my pick. I would say uh, Staltus is pretty good as well. Tatura and Goffred are both good, but not amazing. They're both usable. They both have their place. They'll both probably be quite good in the Cursed City, but I'd say Staltus sort of stands out as the other uh, pretty, pretty darn good one. I know that... Um, yeah, a lot of people actually do like him for uh, for Arena. I think Biohack uses him as his main. We've had Biohack on the channel before. He's got a lot of really good live Arena videos. He's quite high rated, and he actually uses Staltus as his main nuker. Defense nuker brings his own increased defense. He's also extremely good for Hard Dragon, 
which could be important again for Curse City and also just for farming hard dragons. So he's a strong option too. Vitally leaning towards Feral. Grizor then is also absolutely top tier from the Voids. That's very strong. So if you're close to your Void Mercy, might be worth going for an X15 for Grizor. Just proc that Mercy with a small number of shards if you're close and try to get him. He has quite a suggestive, provocative uh, waistband right there. Uh, stuff is happening. Um, contain your arousal, viewers, please. Dear Lord. Uh, but... Yeah, he's extremely good. Again, solid base stats across the board, but he has AoE Provoke with increased resist and increased defense on a three turn. Very strong. His A2 is actually a buff extender on top of being an AoE enemy max HP nuke on a three turn. His A1 is an AoE attack with shields. So he's brilliant with War Master because it's all AoEs. Um, smacks bosses. He just destroys bosses with this A2. And by himself, he's keeping increased resist and increased defense up on your team the whole time with bringing a three turn Provoke some shielding, tons of AoE damage. He's got a nice little passive as well to help him stay alive and defense in all battles, which is great. He is top, top, top tier for Hydra, especially. Great champ. Uh, for Epics, we've got Seeker, Hoskrul, and Umbral. All good. I mean, again, Umbral, she's nice to have. Between Seeker and Hoskrul, I'd be going for probably Seeker first, though Hoskrul's not bad. Uh, Seeker still remains good. As he's actually a good budget option for Hydra as a provoker. Each hit actually has a chance to provoke, though it doesn't say it, but it does, which is weird. But uh, yeah, just the short cooldown with the extra turn on the turn meter boost increased attack. Phenomenal for, well, clan boss and so many other areas in the game. So yeah, Seekers, definitely worth getting. Uh, let me see. Hang on. We've got stuff then on Wednesday as well. Okay, and here we go. This is Wednesday, so the 20th of December. Again, this will be part of CVC. Another progressive chance. <laughs> uh, we've got Kira, Newt, Green Warden, Ruark, and Martyr, all from Ancient, Sacreds, and Primals. I think by far the standout here without any question is Newt. Newt is insane. He was a fusion, the best fusion ever, uh, by a long shot, I would say. I know people really like Brogni, people really like uh, Helicath. They're both really good, but I'd say Newt is a tier above them, even still. Just so good with that triple hit enemy max HP nuke. Insane. Uh, and then, of course, the triple hit A1 with Freeze for Fire Knight Hard, which is probably still the hardest boss in the game overall. Like, yeah, Newt's just insane. You definitely want two Newt's. I've got one. A second Newt would be insanely good, of course. Um, Akira, I think, is not particularly good. Maybe okay with Cursed City. Green Warden Ruark, again, not particularly good. Maybe with Cursed City. Martyr's quite decent. Uh, I, Cursed City, again, coming into it once more. Uh, bringing in, where is she? She's Sacred Order. Bringing in counterattack, which is again, it's it's niche, but it's very strong, right? Increased defense counterattack. I did build a cool Hydra team with Martyr before as well. Make sure to check that out with counterattack for full auto on Nightmare Hydra. Uh, that was quite a decent team. So yeah, they are good. Necret the Great then is absolutely incredible. He is fantastic, so worth going for with boys too. Necret more arena focused. Uh, so if you care about the arena, Necret would be the void to go for. If you care about bosses more so then um, uh, the Ogren guy would be the one to go for. But yeah, Necret, obviously, we've seen him before. You know, just so much protection for your nukers. That's massive, massive for Arena. Uh, and he'd be probably decent for some Cursed City stuff too, I'd imagine. For the Epics, Tyrell, very dated. Morag would be my pick here, and I am not a fan of Frenzy, really, at all. Let's take a quick look at her, but Morag is super good. I actually used her for some Cursed City stuff. Great champion. Dwarf, she has a little ally attack, which is very strong. AoE with strengthen for your team. And then she is uh, counterattacking whenever she's hit under strengthen. So it's cool. She's got a double hitter. She's counterattacking constantly with it. This is a three turn cooldown strengthen for two turns. Is unique amongst epics. No other epics at the moment, I believe, still can do that. Only legendaries, but she can do it. The ally attack is good. So Morag is surprisingly good in Demon Lord Clan Boss. Surprisingly good in Cursed City in Arena. Quite an underrated epic, actually. Uh, Frenzy? Uh, I don't know about Frenzy. I was not impressed when I tested Frenzy on the test server. Like, AoE Provoke, increased defense on a four turn. Mm. Then she's got three times random with HP burn. She might be worth having, um, you know? Might be worth having for the Cursed City, but uh, I would not be... I would not be going out of my way to get her. It's like, oh, if I pull her eventually from a shard? Okay, cool. Maybe some Cursed City. She's gonna be nice, but uh, this is not a must-have champion at all, so... Yeah, it's it's more about the neck, right? So strong, strong options, honestly. Very strong from the voids and even strong from your sacred ancients primals. Is it worth pulling though outside of an event? I don't believe there's any summoning event tied into this. 
And dear Lord, you are probably absolutely stretched thin if you've been going for Tormen, if you've been going for uh, Blizzard. I mean, and that's just going for sort of the, the mandatory events, as it were. If you've gone for anything optional, <laughs> like you're not going to have any shards. Um, it's just it's just tough. And trust me, trust me, even if you skip these, you're going like, man, these are great summoning events. Nubkex, what am I going to do if I skip them? I'm going to have missed out. Trust me, there's going to be 50 more amazing summoning events before the end of the year. They are going to pack December absolutely full. Um, oh, yeah. Also, I'm, I'm now expecting, I was surprised they didn't do a free login legendary actually recently. I think it's quite likely. I think that the game is coming to Steam. I saw on Steam, I think at the start of January, but expecting a free login legendary at the start of January to tie in with uh, the Steam promotion. But like, there we go, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Oh, I'm going to grab that mystery shard. That's going to help me not do these summoning events because I'm going to be skipping these ones. That's for sure. I do not have enough shards. Me going to do a skip. Thanks very much, Plarium. But yeah. I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.